Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous but little bit windy Christmas Eve 2020. That would make it, what is this, Thursday, December 24, 2020, where it is 80 degrees. It is 80 degrees on December 24th at noon. Uh, heading to 35 tonight and 26 tomorrow night here in this at Crazy Crane Campground Hip Camp. And uh, so as the big blow blows in, doing what I do pretty much every day. And so I want to thank Brother Alistair for alerting me to the newest UN report. The newest UN report that will be completely ignored by everybody at the UN. This is just the latest of this never-ending string of reports about how we are completely doomed and that once again, guys, as I as I drill into the ground, this is a report from the scientists working at the United Nations. Okay, working for the United Nations. This is this team of of uh, researchers hired by the UN to advise the people supposedly. Uh, running this planet or wanting to run this planet. My only problem with UN scientists is that the record is clear over the past however many years. They are too conservative. Okay, so my guess, this is a report, like every other one of their reports, is way too conservative. And more importantly, it will be completely ignored put on the shelf, whatever, you know, just the fact that it's even being re released on Christmas Eve should tell you something, that nobody wants this to get out. But uh, here we are on Collapse Chronicles, and actually NPR, shockingly, NPR did a straight version of this, uh, so we're going to go straight to the uh, horse's, is it the horse's mouth? And we're going to look at, I believe this is the 30th, I think this is the 30th anniversary. They've been doing these reports, so I'm not, they don't do them every year, but this is the 30th year of it. I think this started back there around 1990, so we are going to hear... We're just going to touch with the overview of the Human Development Report 2020, the Human Development Report, and titled, The Next Frontier, Human Development and the Anthropocene. And uh, I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the link on to the, uh, to the NPR story, and you can, after reading that, you can scroll down to the bottom and they will link you to the overview, which I'm going to read from, and to the full report. So we're just going to get a taste of this. And if you want to hear more of this doom and gloom from the UN, just go on the link and scroll down to the bottom and link over to the report itself. Okay, so here is the forward to the overview. <clears throat> This is written by Akeem Steiner, the administrator of the UN Development Program. I wonder if we can get Akeem Steiner. So this is what Akeem has to say to wish you a Merry Christmas about the state of the planet at the end of 2020. <clears throat> Hidden in the long shadow of the corona panic, 2020 has been a dark year. Scientists have been forewarning a pandemic like this one for years, pointing to the rise in zoonotic pathogens, those that jump from animals to humans, as a reflection of the pressures people put on planet Earth. 
Those pressures have grown exponentially over the past 100 years. Humans have achieved incredible things, but we have taken the earth to the brink. Climate change, rupturing inequalities, record numbers of people forced from their homes by conflict and crisis. These are the results of societies that value what they measure instead of measuring what they value. In fact, the pressures we, meaning we humans, exert on the planet have become so great that scientists are considering whether the Earth has entered an entirely new geological epoch, the Anthropocene, or the Age of Humans. It means that we are the first people to live in an age defined by human choice, in which the dominant risk to our survival is ourselves, sounding a lot like Pogo the Possum from 50 years ago. Pogo the Possum, we have met the enemy, and he is us. I'm glad to see the United Nations is catching up with Pogo the Possum 50 years too late. Advancing human development while erasing such planetary pressures is the next frontier for human development, and its exploration lies at the heart of this 30th anniversary edition of the UNDP's Human Development Report. <clears throat> to survive and thrive in this new age, we must redesign a path to progress that respects the intertwined fate of people and planet and recognizes that the carbon and material footprint of the people who have more is choking the opportunities of the people who have less. For example, the actions of an indigenous person in the Amazon whose stewardship helps protect much of the world's tropical forest, this is Akeem's rant, not mine, uh, offsets the equivalent of the carbon emissions of a person in the richest 1% of people in the world. Yet, indigenous people continue to face hardship, persecution, and discrimination. <clears throat> 4,000 generations could live and die before the carbon dioxide released from the Industrial Revolution until today is scrubbed from our atmosphere, and yet decision makers continue to subsidize fossil fuels, prolonging our carbon habit like a drug running through the economy's veins. <clears throat> and while the world's richest countries could experience up to 18 fewer days of extreme weather each year within our lifetime because of the climate crisis, the poorest countries face up to 100 extra days of extreme weather. That number could still be cut in half by the Paris Agreement if fully implemented. So here's what we have is one of these absolute, you know, unenforceable, soon to be completely ignored UN reports uh, talking about how another one of these BS UN reports the uh, you know the Paris Agreement is going to do a damn thing. To uh, you, you know that this is this is my problem with even the scientists uh, working at the UN. They are still a bunch of hopium soaked. Uh, clueless morons. If they weren't, they would not be working at the UN.
or are you following me? I mean, they, they can, you know, this guy, Akeem, he's probably a pretty nice guy. I'd like to have him on the show. Akeem understands how doomed we are. Okay, and, and he pushes the envelope as far as his little uh, masters at the UN will let him. Uh, you, you know, kind of like they, you know, they let Greta Thunberg uh, push her little envelope. But if Akeem puts one toe over the line uh, and, and acts like the Paris Agreement is an absolute unadulterated joke, he would not be the administrator of the United Nations Development Program. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting off track here, so let's uh, get back to Akeem. <clears throat> it is time to make a change. Our future is not a question of choosing between people or trees. It is neither or both. Yes. When the Human Development Report first challenged, challenged the primacy of growth as the measure of progress in 1990, the Cold War still shaped geopolitics. The World Wide Web had just been invented and very few people had heard of climate change. In that moment, UNDP offered a forward-looking alternative to GDP, you know, gross domestic product. Back in 1990, uh, Akeem's group offered a forward-looking alternative to GDP, ranking all countries by whether people had the freedom and opportunity to live a life they valued. In so doing, we gave voice to a new conversation on the meaning of a good life and the ways we could achieve it. <clears throat> Thirty years on, now in 2020, much has changed, but hope and possibility have not. If people have the power to create an entirely new geological epoch, then people also have the power to choose to change. We are not the last generation of the Anthropocene. Well, I guess Akeem is probably about my age. No, I think Generation Z Akeem is the last generation of the Anthropocene, since I've never understood who comes after Generation Z. We are not the last generation of the Anthropocene, but we are the first to recognize it. We are the explorers, the innovators, who get to decide what this, the first generation of the Anthropocene, will be remembered for. You know, remembered by the uh, irradiated cockroaches and space aliens who inherit the burned out wasteland uh, of the Anthropocene. Will we be remembered by the fossils we leave behind? Swaths of species, long extinct, sunken and fossilized in the mud alongside plastic toothbrushes and bottle caps? A legacy of loss and waste? That is exactly uh, uh, what we will be remembered by the irradiated cockroaches. or will we leave a much more valuable imprint? Balance between people and planet, a future that is fair and just. The next frontier, human development and the, and the Anthropocene sets out this choice, offering a thought-provoking, necessary alternative to paralysis in the face of rising poverty and inequalities alongside alarming planetary change. With its new experimental planetary pressures adjusted human development index, we hope to hope 
we hope to open a new conversation on the path ahead for each country, a path yet unexplored. The way forward from the corona panic will be the journey of a generation. We hope, we hope it is one that all people choose to travel together. And I am just going to leave it there, guys, if you want to uh, to uh, continue with this. And uh, so then they get, you know, just the overview is about 50 pages long. Uh, you know, the overviews always start out being honest before the hopium. Well, let's read. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, well, I'm going to read, uh, we're going to read a little bit of the, now that we're done with the forward, this is how it starts out, you know, when they're a little bit honest. So we're going to, we are going to read the first two pages of the, uh, of the overview. Mm. <clears throat> We are at an unprecedented moment in the history of humankind and in the history of our planet. Warning lights for our societies and the planet are flashing red. They have been for some time, as we well know. The corona panic is the latest harrowing consequence of imbalance writ large. Scientists have long warned that unfamiliar pathogens will emerge more frequently from interactions among humans, livestock, and wildlife, interactions that have steadily increased in scale and intensity, ultimately squeezing local ecosystems so hard that deadly viruses spill out. Yes, the corona panic may be the latest to do so, and unless we relax our grip on nature, it will not be the last. New pathogens do not fall from the sky, nor do the epidemics they may cause. The corona panic has spread quickly around an interconnected world, taking root wherever it has landed and thriving especially in the cracks in societies, exploiting and exacerbating myriad inequalities in human development. Yes. Uh, just wait till the, uh, wait till the next one. So, uh, while the corona panic has absorbed the world's attention, pre-existing crises continue. Yes, consider climate change. The 2020 Atlantic hurricane season either set new records or was on the verge of doing so, both in the number of storms and how many rapidly intensified. Within the past 12 months, extraordinary fires scorched enormous swaths of Australia, the Brazilian Pantanal, eastern Siberia, and the west coast of the U.S. The planet's biodiversity is plunging, with a quarter of species now facing extinction, many within decades. Numerous experts believe we are living through, or on the cusp of, a mass extinction event, the sixth in history of the planet, and the first to be caused by a single organism, us. Yes, the strain on the planet mirrors the strain facing many of our societies. This is not mere coincidence. Indeed, planetary imbalances, the dangerous planetary change for people and all forms of life, and social imbalances exacerbate one another. As the 2019 Human Development Report made plain, many inequalities in human development have been increasing and continue to do so. Climate change, among other dangerous planetary changes, will only make them worse. Social mobility is down. Social instability is up. 
ominous signs of democratic backsliding and rising authoritarianism are worrying collective action on anything <clears throat> from the corona panic to climate change becomes more difficult against a backdrop of social fragmentation. <clears throat> There is talk of returning to normal as if some predetermined end date exists for the many crises gripping our societies and the planet, as if going back to normal is desirable or even possible. What or whose normal should that be? Lurching from crisis to crisis is one of the defining features of the present day, which has something to do with the normalcy of the past, a return to which would seemingly consign the future to endless crisis management, not to human development plan. I'm sorry, human development. Whether we wish it or not, a new normal is coming. Corona panic is just the tip of the spear. Scientists generally believe we are exiting the Holocene, which spanned some 12,000 years during which human civilization as we know it came to be. They propose that we are now entering a new geological epoch, the Anthropocene, in which humans are a dominant force shaping the future of the planet. The question is, what do we do with this new age? Do we choose in the face of uncertain futures to embark on bold new paths that expand human freedoms while erasing planetary pressures? Or do we choose to try and ultimately fail to go back to business as usual and be swept away, ill-equipped and rudderless, into a dangerous unknown. That is exactly thanks largely to uh, all of the quote policy makers at the United Nations that want nothing to more to do other than to continue business as usual by you know uh, greenwashing it. Uh, welcome the new boss, same as the old boss. Uh, you know, it's putting a, a little green smiley face uh, on business as usual. Uh, the new business as usual is going to look just like the old business as usual. Uh, and this Akeem dude knows damn well uh, that this is a bunch of, uh, you know, corporate, since the United Nations is the embodiment of the global corporatocracy, otherwise known as the New World Order. These are all interchangeable terms. Uh, you know, since the UN is the mouthpiece of the global corporatocracy, uh, they're, they're going to put a new little face, little smiley green face uh, on, uh, on the destruction of the planet. And, uh, you know, these little lefties over at NPR, uh, you know, who actually did a pretty good job. I, I'm actually somewhat impressed how honest NPR was in their coverage of this story, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, they're, you know, bringing out this story on Christmas Eve when nobody is paying any attention and, uh, you know, nobody's going to re read this report. But anyway, with that, I'm going to wrap up my Christmas Eve 2020 roundup. And guys, I'm going to be uh, doing some traveling and getting the hell out of this cold weather, so I am heading out into who knows where tomorrow. I don't really know what my schedule holds for the next week. 
Um, not sure how many how many videos I'll be doing in the last week because uh, I have a lot of canoeing to do in the last few days of 2020. I'm going to be spending less time on a computer and more time in a canoe to say goodbye to 2020, but I will try to get a New Year's Eve 2020 uh, wrap-up. Uh, and I'm pretty sure uh, we're going to let my friend and fellow Doomer, Deb Ozarko, uh, Deb Ozarko is going to wrap up 2020 for us one week from today. So get out there and enjoy your last week of 2020. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Bye, guys.